The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. As a small biz pro, I so we roll. Using procurement, program, and control. As a small biz pro, I so we grow. Using procurement, program, and control. Yeah, I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Good afternoon and welcome to the Business Zone with Crystal, Gilbert, and Don. They're on their way, so right now you have Crystal, and uh, we're glad to have you guys. It's the Christmas holiday season, and I hopefully everyone is out there shopping, and if not, you only have, I what is it, I guess about 10 days, actually less than 10 days, to start your Christmas shopping and get ready. Uh, this week has been an awesome week. I've gone to all kinds of holiday events, and it's been a lot of fun. Last night, I was at the GLAC um, annual Christmas network mixer. We It was over at the Sheraton and um, at LAX, and it was fantastic. All their new members and, and, and supporters were there. And so I had a great time mixing and networking with everyone. Uh, earlier this week was Recycle Black Dollars Network Mixer. We had a ball. Our DJ, Mr. Bill, he did his thing playing Christmas music. We we did something special this time. We let our um allowed our members um to stand up and give us a five minute um uh, uh informational speech on their businesses and they had such a great time. That's the second time we've done that this year and it's been quite successful. And you learn new things about your business your businesses and your members all the time. And normally we only have a thirty second um, hey, workout buddy. Hey, Linda. We normally have a 30 second. They have a 37 pitch opportunity, but this time they had five whole minutes and they did some great stuff. So really proud of them. We want to wish all our members a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, a happy Kwanzaa. And um, so until we see them, we won't see them again until 2019. Isn't it amazing that 2019 is already here? So I don't know. We've been talking for the last month about planning for 2019. I know I've been really into the whole plan process and having a really good time identifying new opportunities. Hey, Everett, how are you? We missed you, guy. I hear you retired. I think I saw that on Facebook that you retired. Um, So it's been pretty, it's kind of fun and exciting. New opportunities pop up every single day. So I'm really looking forward to 2019, at least for myself personally. I do know there's some industries that are about to make a change. And uh, so when that happens, we have to really think about um, how we're going to adapt our businesses to those changes. And, um, and, And everyone should be thinking about that if your business and that the business that's about to change is the real estate industry and it's going to turn into a seller's market where it's been a buyer's market. So you really want to look at what's the different ways and how can you look at your business and still be able to achieve the same um, success that you have had um, when it was a seller's market. So, of course, you got to change your marketing strategies. You have to change your business, some of your business strategies. You probably got to tighten your belt because the prices are dropping, which means that um, you're going to make less money. And um, But again, you know, guys, it's about making sure that you have multiple streams of income so that you're not just depending on one product or one service that is going to sustain your business uh, because it, that happens all the time. Um, I know in my business that has been the case for, you know, off and on. And so I, I personally have witnessed in my business a change every seven to ten years. And so that means I have to acquire 
different skills to adapt to whatever the marketplace is. So I hope you are doing that. Um, That should be part of your planning process. You should be reading the business journals, the Wall Street Journal, Forbes magazine, Inc. magazine, to see where the trends are going to go. And especially if it's in your industry, everyone should spend time researching their industry and not just on an annual basis. You should really think about researching your business probably every three to six months, I would recommend. Um, So uh, (laughs) that way you're not caught off guard because that's the worst thing, trying to catch up to the industry. You want to be able to um, see it coming before it gets there so you can implement some strategies and some task, um, some strategies that will help you continue to make money because your bills are all set. Those are what we call in the accounting industry your fixed your fixed expenses. So they're not going to go anywhere. Um, so you at least have to be able to identify strategies that can cover your rent, um, your mortgage, your um, telephone, your communication system, your internet systems, because those are all the things that you have to have in place in order to do business. So um, this is the time you should be doing that. So while you're out there Christmas shopping and, and starting to enjoy family for the holidays, you should already know for the first six months an idea of what your business is going to look like. Um, I know in some cases, like my business, I have to start in November creating business for January uh, because everything starts to slow down at the end of the year. So I I have to have some things in place that will jump off in January so that the income my income doesn't take a dive. So I don't know how many of you out there have that same type of business. Uh, those of you on Facebook, how about you? Do you have that same type of business that you should be planning right now and looking? Some people are very good at the, the plan process. And then others kind of wait, and then they're quite surprised when when the change takes place. And then, you know, they start to struggle, and that's kind of a, not a great place to be. So you want to take care of that. Uh, let's see what else has gone on this week while I'm waiting for my co-host to come in. The digital marketing class, guys, that we're doing is just awesome. I'm pretty excited. I set up my blog for the business zone, um, the platform. I got my domain name. And now I'm going this weekend, probably Sunday, <coughs> I am going to sit down and start writing my first couple of blogs. Uh, my plan is to blog twice a week. Um, we're going to see how that goes, but I'm going to really make a conscious effort at that. And I'm kind of excited about that. So I don't know if you guys, especially those of you that have not been in our classes. So let me tell you a little bit about the digital marketing. So digital marketing, the way we're interacting with it. And I think last week, if you tuned into the show was with, um, Armin Santos was here talking about it. So we're talking about how you can create massive, um, passive income, uh, doing something that has really nothing to do with your business per se, but it does create and help you establish a brand and, and keep that brand in, in everybody's face, uh, because that's how you make money. And that's how people become comfortable enough with you to, in order to activate, to, uh, to either buy your product or, or to take advantage of the services you offer. So we've been talking about all these amazing ways that you can bring in more income and or bring in passive income. So I was telling somebody today that when let's talk about when we talk about your own industry maybe taking a slow turn and and, and um hey Candace, how are you? Your your industry may be uh, slowing up. So just imagine with the writing of your blogs and, and monetizing your blog and monetizing your website, what if you were bringing in 
equivalent to what your fixed expenses were, are. So, you know, that could be anywhere from 5000 to $10,000. Just imagine if you could bring that in every month and that you wouldn't be as stressed about making sure that you're making sales. So after that, everything that you do is above and beyond that. And that gives you working capital so that you can grow and expand your business. So we're pretty excited <laughs> about the digital marketing. And I think finally, some of our, our, the individuals that have been coming into our class, they're really excited and they're going to start um, writing their blogs. So it's been kind of interesting this week. Um, I have gotten my first three affiliate marketing uh, income. Um, so it takes about 45 days for it to really get into my bank account. Cause so that's kind of fun. And it was actually kind of exciting. I opened up my email and it says, you now have received X amount of dollars from my Bluehost affiliate. So now I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the uh, income that will come in from my, um, from Amazon, which would be when I start selling my, my classes, my QuickBooks classes. So let me tell you what blogging does for you. So I don't know if anybody on anybody on Facebook that's uh, tuned in, are you guys blogging or have you ever thought about blogging? So let me talk about that a little bit. So blogging will help you, as I said, create <clears throat> some, uh, a residual income, some passive income. You can be a part-time blogger. You could be a full-time blogger, actually, if that's what you want to do. Um, one of the things that your blogger allows you to do is to um, share your story. So we do a little bit. I see you guys doing that on Facebook, and that's really cool. But uh, with Facebook and some of the other social medias, the algorithm is set up where only a small population actually sees your blast. So if you're doing a blog, now you're emailing that out uh, through your email system, and now the world can actually see that, and it really helps you become a expert in your field. And um, so that's a good thing. And it also helps for your brand, and it helps you uh, to expand your services or your products to um, to a broader marketplace and to a broader audience. So that's one of the benefits of blogging is it allows you to have a voice and you can be heard and you share your story with the entire world if that's what you choose to do. Um, many bloggers use it as a almost like a diary or they when they're journal, they're just doing that. So what we've discovered through our classes is uh, the best way to create a blog is to create a blog based upon something that you're passionate about. So if you have a hobby, um, if you have a uh, something that you're really passionate about, a subject matter or, or, or um, you like to cook, say you like to cook and you really uh, um, you have some incredible recipes that your family feel that you're very good at, then you could blog about food. Food is a, a um, an international topic that, you know, spans the globe, actually, because everybody eats, first of all, and everybody enjoys good food. So um, that's one of the things that you can do. And my one of my co-hosts just came in from his freeway journey. So... <laughs> And the way he chuckled, so I assumed that wasn't the best journey. <laughs> and then the other one just exited from the freeway, so they should be up in a minute. So, so what? Uh, so we'll. Um, so blogging helps you, and then one of the things I think most companies, most individuals have is marketing their business. You rip, most people have a hard time, and and they're very caught. They're concerned about the cost of marketing. But today, marketing is so much easier than it used to be. When I started my business 30 years ago, when you actually had to advertise on radio and newspapers, and it was costly. But now you can create your own budget, and you can actually do it on the budget if you choose to. So that's one of the benefits of blogging. So if you're interested in learning how to blog, then give us a call um, at 323 Two nine three 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 seven five, and we can talk about how how you go about that. So we're going to take a quick break so my co-host can settle in into his seat, 
and share with us his week. So we'll be back in a second. Hello, meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduced. So we're back on the business zone with Chris. And Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. And I was mysteriously missing for the first 30 minutes of the show. He was lost. You were lost on the freeway, huh? I was lost on the freeway. <laughs> you know, they should do a movie or something about lost on the freeway, man. Yeah. Okay. That's like a world by itself out there. And I actually, um, I had to run some errands. Hey, hey. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I... Um, 
I had to go to Hawthorne, so I was scurrying back over here as yeah. well. I had some errands that I had to run. This. Did you hit traffic over there? Um, well, you know, it's surface streets, yeah, so yeah. I I know how to take back streets. I mean, you can't live in a city if you don't know how to do back uh, streets. One, dude. one thing I know about Crystal, man, she knows she knows how to navigate <laughs> those side streets. <laughs> uh, I am not one. You know, the last time that I worked. I guess I worked in the Valley in early part of my career. Uh, I, I, I lived in L.A. and I worked in the Valley. Uh-huh. And then I flopped it and I moved to the Valley. Yeah. And then I was and then I was working in L.A. So um, when I first started. When I first that whole arrangement, I was working on the west side, and I lived close to the 405. Yeah. And then at that time, we're still, if you live in, I lived in Sherman Oaks. So you got the canyons you can come through if it's not raining. Yeah. You have Sepulveda that you could come yeah. through or the free yeah, yeah. So I had alternate routes yeah. so I could always navigate my way through, right? Mm-hmm. Um, of, uh, But then what happened... My, I had to switch jobs, and I then started having to work downtown L.A. Yeah. Well, there's only one way into downtown L.A. <laughs> and it's via the 101. Oh, via the 101. <laughs> oh, and I, trust me, you know what that looks like, right? Oh, yeah. So um, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. So I vowed. Never again. Never, ever to be that far away from work where I have to take freeways. Yeah. So I make sure that, and then, of course, I, you know, as an entrepreneur, you never, you schedule your own time. So I never schedule anything on the west side, yeah. anything earlier than noontime, 11 noontime, because traffic has died down. And then I never, um, I make sure that I'm on this side of town before the 4 or 5 o'clock, because... Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I it's, try to stay away from the west side. Man. The anything, west side is, Im- is yeah. insane. I don't care what time Any, of the day. Anything from from L A. downtown L A. to uh, on the right side going west, I I stay away from that. Yeah, L A. downtown is my marker right there, right where Los Angeles Street, uh, <laughs> Temple, those street. That's my marker. Well, actually, is is anything. If you going east, uh, I mean west of La Cienega, that's when it really gets oh, just yeah. crazy. Yeah. If you're going yeah. to Santa Monica yeah. or any of those places out there, it's easier to get to the South Bay than it is to get to the Santa Monica, Venice, Culver City area. When I used to run the Small Business uh, Development Center at the Santa Monica Airport, it was 26 miles one way from where I live to over on that side. I'm going Oh, and every day I had to do this. Twenty six miles one way, twenty six miles yeah, back. Yeah, oh, boy, 26. That's, that's brutal. Every day, oh, that's man. brutal. <laughs> oh, man. That yeah. is. And I think I did that for like two years. I used to when I worked downtown, um, and in my bedroom there was a skylight. So if I woke up about three or four and I heard rain, yeah. it was, I just knew it yeah. was going to be it's, so yeah. <laughs> horrific. Yeah. And, you know, when you're driving those long distances, I guess my concern is that you're more apt to have an accident driving long distances than mm-hmm. you are going um, going short distances. That is true. Because people get, especially if the traffic is bad, people mm-hmm. get lulled mm-hmm. into this lullaby pace, and yeah. then you look up in the back of their car. Yeah, is in yeah. your in the back of your car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Did you see on the news? We have actually a caller coming in. Our our first guest is oh. going to be a caller. He's a real estate um, owns a lot of property. He we we uh, he's a good friend of Don's, and she's on her way here. She's caught in the freeway. I think oh. she just exited the freeway. Oh, okay. um, and he does. Um, he's involved with the boxing community. With celebrities and athletes, so he should be an interesting. Um, he was showing a house, that's why he's not in the studio today. Oh, uh, okay, can't so wait. His can't name wait. is Frederick Hawkins, so he'll be. He's here. All uh, righty. So our caller is here, and he's on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, yeah. you. How are you? <laughs> how you feeling, Crystal? I am good. My co-host is Gilbert Buchanan. He's here. Don is on her way in. Traffic is bad for her. She was coming in from Ventura. Okay, great. She should be here. So I didn't get the bio. So what we're going to do is, you know, we're talking about business. And I know you have a, um, from just what I've heard from Don, you 
you have you have business going on. You're an incredible dad, and oh. <laughs> somehow, it, and and I know this from his Instagram pictures. So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide my computer over so my part my co part my co host here can can see your Instagram world, and uh-huh. and then somehow or another you're in, involved with the boxing world. So why don't you tell yeah, us yeah. what you doing out there, dude? <laughs> No, simply, I'm just a guy who, who, who works towards completion, man. It ain't nothing special, no special sauce, none of that. I just uh, I just believe in making the ultimate sacrifice so you can live how you want to live, you know. And that's just, uh, you know, I, I, I dab into real estate a little bit. I'm big in boxing. You know, I, uh, I'm in media and boxing and uh, that, that, that's the fun of my life, but the, the meat and potatoes is the property. So, so how did you, um, what's happening here? My Facebook has been. Man, I'm looking at some of your photos here, man. This is Gilbert Buchanan, and I'm looking at some of your photos here. They look scary, man. You got that mean look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I must have gloves on. If I got gloves on, I'm Man, your, your opponents, man, <laughs> looking at this, they'll know not to mess with you, man. So, so do you box, or is it just you're around? This is actually well, guess, the guy that just I, boxed. I'm, uh, I'm competitive to a guy that's walking down in the street. I wouldn't have a problem with him, but in terms of professionally, <laughs> now nah, I, I just do it to stay in shape. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so this world. So, so I met him at the gym doing mm-hmm. my thing with Don, yeah. the, the brutal treatment <laughs> that happens every morning at the gym. I mean, three times a week the at abuse. the gym. The abuse. <laughs> and then she, uh, Frederick actually had a 30-day run challenge. Mm. So we all participated. Very and good. then after we finished the 30 days, he took us all out to breakfast. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm missing out on that. <laughs> yeah, you missed all 100 miles of it. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear you're a real estate mogul, man. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. So so uh, simply put, I own a few properties here in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, fortunately, fortunately enough that it, it has afforded me the life to to live the life I want to live. Yeah. And uh, it's just basically just common sense, nuts and bolts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cut off all fat, save everything. That's you good, know. man. Much respect to that. I appreciate that. Because uh, many of us uh, minority entrepreneurs, you know, we're, we're not investing in real estate. And uh, that's a good thing for us to do if we, if we want some, some level of longevity in this marketplace. Yeah, I mean, the only thing you can't make, you can get a new wife, yeah. you can make a new baby, yeah. but they're not making any more dirt. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's capped off. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer in own where you live, mm-hmm. own where you work, Yeah. you know what I mean, and potentially own where you play. Yeah. You know, and uh, I just, I, I, I've literally been independent, independent. I was laid off at 27 and I couldn't believe it, right? I was like, no. I was teacher of the year, and I was laid off. And I said, how can I be laid off? Yeah. And I realized I didn't own where I worked. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And so I I went on this investment thing, and uh, from stocks to property, and the property hit, and now the stocks are hitting. And, you know, it's just, uh, honestly, just literally common sense. It, it ain't yeah. nothing I just don't have expository income where I just waste money. Right, right, so, right. The so, only time I get what I want is, it, is if there's an asset attached to it. I hear that. Oh, that's amazing. So did you have a mentor or did you yeah, have... I have a great mentor. I have a great mentor, black mentor too as well. Uh, and he's worth well over $20 million, no college education, uh, lives in a close to 10,000 square foot mansion in the marina. That's great. Uh, and, and and he taught me the game, and I was smart enough to listen. Yeah, you very know? good. And, and now it's just uh, me just just um, implementing the plan A B C D. So it's, it's nothing hard about it. It's just it's just people think. See, people think like, oh, I need fifty thousand dollars to make a to make an initial investment. But if you don't eat out, don't drink, don't smoke, 
You know what I mean? Instead of dating five girls, you date maybe two. You know? <laughs> <laughs> one low maintenance, one high maintenance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you do that, you'll save twenty five, thirty thousand dollars And when you see it growing, you'll be more inclined to pick up side jobs. You yeah. know what I mean? Because we're, because we're, inspiration is in success. Yeah. So if you're selling, so if you're saving twenty thousand dollars, that's a that's a symptom of success. So you'll be inspired to get to thirty thousand. Remember, we're little kids and like we want to get to a hundred dollars. Yeah. Man, if I can get to a hundred dollars, if I can get to a thousand, I can get to ten. It's the same concept yeah. as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And uh, it, it, it's it's just you know if, if you can save ten dollars a day. But I think happens. we're. We're, we're so conditioned to having what we want and having it instantaneously that uh, that's what makes it difficult for most people to save. Um, so what did you do before when you lost when this job that you didn't own? <laughs> what were you doing before I a, this? I was a school teacher. I was a school teacher for seven years. Yeah. And, uh, then one, then one, day, one day they walked in and say, that's it. They said, well, this will be your last year's teacher. And I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? I, no sulking. I was hurt. I was devastated. You know, yeah. I thought I was going to be a teacher my entire life. I thought I was going to be a teacher and a high school coach, and I thought my life was pretty much laid out for me. Yeah. You know, in terms of the business world, and lo and behold, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Sometimes when disappointments happen to us, we got to look at it at a, as a motivator, and we can't really... Yeah. We can't really beat ourselves up. All we got to do is just regroup, reorganize, and just refocus. That's really what it is. Yeah, but that breakdown was a breakthrough for me, man. Like, yeah. In real life, you know, you know what I mean. And uh, I am forever indebted to that superintendent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you call him up and say? Do you oh, do you call him up and say thank you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just might. You know what? I, I might send him a thank you. You, you should. Know, but... You should, man. <laughs> Let's call him up and say thank you. I really appreciate what man, you did for me. It was literally a blessing, man. You know? and, uh, so your uh, mentor, he also, so he taught you and, and, and explained the real estate game and, and investment. Uh, did he, did he, it, was he also your mentor for uh, investing in the stock market? No, no, no. I'm an ambulance chaser in terms of stock. In terms of stock, so so like for example, if uh, it's common practice, so if I know that there is a flood, if okay, BP had an oil spill, right? Yeah. Right. Their their stock dropped to maybe twenty something dollars. Yeah. It was, it was high twenties, low thirties, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I bought BP stock. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm basically an ambulance chaser because I know in Two months, it's going to be back to normal, and it's going to be a new story. Well, or however long it took, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, kind, kind of like, kind of like when we had the recession in two thousand eight, yeah. and and Citibank stocks went down really cheap. I think it went down to five dollars. And yeah, Bank of America the same way. Yeah, and I kept speculating, man. I'm going, man. I'm going to get some money, and I'm going to get some of those, and I never did. And next thing you know, it's back over sixty, and I think it's close to a hundred now. Yeah, you yeah, gotta, I, uh, you gotta act on that kind of stuff. You gotta act you like gotta right act now, fast. right? Yeah. You know, I'm gonna give an example. Like, uh, I'm actually gonna tell this story. This gonna be like one of my next stories on Instagram. I told people 15 months ago. I said, "You need to buy Nike stock." I, I, I thought it was low value, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this was September of last year, so it's been about 15 months. Yeah. And now I'm, I, I, I cast out my. My, uh, my my Nike stock, and I'm gonna turn it in, in, into an apartment building. Wow! In 15 uh, years, and in 15 years, that that standalone apartment building will generate over a million dollars. I hear that, man. And I hear that. That's phenomenal. You need to do. Do you do classes on that, Frederick? <laughs> I, I do. I uh, well, I have a Patreon where people pay and subscribe to it. But I want to. Me and my business partner actually wants to get in want to get in the community yeah you know, there's nothing sexy about us you know we're just average looking <laughs> quote unquote average looking americans and <laughs> we just work every day we have a family you know what i mean we shop at the same stores yeah. we drive the same cars yeah we pass by each other every day but it's just the uh it, it, if you had someone to inspire you 
and holds you accountable the first four steps, yeah, it would change your whole entire mind. Exactly. You know, as it relates to money, as it relates to life, and how you view, you understand? Like, yeah, like that's people, true. People misunderstand. People don't understand. If you go into a store and ask for ten percent at a, ask for ten percent off at a ninety nine cent store, yeah, you're going to have the same practice going into uh, buying your house asking for ten percent off. It's yeah. the practice of the behavior. Yes, you know people say, oh, it's just ten cent. Oh, it's just twenty dollars. Right, oh, but it's the practice of the behavior. Yeah, or if, you, if you have that consistent practice, then when you get to the million dollar realm, then the, the ten cents that you save here, the ten dollars. That's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and that's, and that's priceless equity, mental equity. That's priceless uh, uh, practice equity. Like like uh, Malcolm Gladwell has a ten thousand hour rule. Yeah, you know where where, where you have to put things in practice for ten thousand hours. And, and and I'm a firm believer in just practicing the behavior. Yeah, it trains the mindset to practice the behavior. Right. You know, and uh, that's it. to simply say yes. I would. I want to get into our community. And tell them how easy it is. Like group, like like I don't understand how two women can be best friends and not own a house together. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't understand that at all. I don't fathom. Uh, uh, like for real. Two no, you're parents, right. Like, like 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 for example, hypothetically speaking, one of them has a Section Eight voucher, the other one works, and and the other one just has pays regular cash. Yeah. I don't understand for the life of me. You got two single parents. I'm just a hypothetical situation. They're best friends. They babysit for one another. Yeah. Person go out of town. They go on a date. They need to borrow a hundred dollars. They borrow from each other. I don't understand the mindset, how you can't turn that into home ownership. Yeah. It's I, the same practice. I hear that, you man. You understand what I'm saying? I in hear that. In 15 years, you know, your, your equity value that went up 30%, and now y'all can split it and go your separate ways, and now both of you guys can be homeowners in four years. Yeah. I, I think and it's because... I think it's because they don't know. In fact, um, it's interesting that you say that because um, on I, um, we've only seen each other at the gym, but I'm actually involved in the community, and I um, I'm the co-director of an organization called Recycling Black Dollars. Is one of the things that I do besides the show, and I'm a business coach. So. When uh, the Metro train was being, um, when they first started the, the um, when they first started the construction on Metro, what they did was uh, most of the businesses were not, um, they didn't own their, they didn't own the businesses, the buildings that they were in. So we lost about 379 businesses on the Crenshaw line. And one of the things that when I asked the question, in you know, let's say they were at that location for twenty to thirty years. When I asked them, uh, had you not thought about buying the property? And they were like, "We didn't know we could." Mm. And so, even though it seems like common sense, you know, so many of our our people are they don't think like that. And uh, so, one of the reasons I was asking, do you do classes? Because I belong to a several women's groups, my organization. Uh, this is the kind of message we want to deliver uh, to them uh, to spur, to inspire them that, like you said, an average individual, not not someone working in corporate America, this is what they were doing. You, you know, something could be bad happened in, in some people's mind that would have been devastating but for you you saw that opportunity to really take you know to just fly so that's so uh that's a message and the inspiration that i would say we need gilbert works you know he does a lot of workshops and training as well and we all marvel at all this great information that we disseminate on a regular basis that you have to still coach these people and, and, and literally pull them to embrace a very lucrative opportunity. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, you're right. And, and, and when you look at us from a, I always know this or not know this. This is just my hypothesis. We're only been civilians of America since the end of the Vietnam war. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is the first. So this is the first, generation of black wealth yeah so so when you put that into play we don't know what money is we don't know the true understanding yeah. of home ownership uh property ownership job ownership owning where we play we don't know the full destiny of that so we just 
as a whole, as a whole people, we're happy just to be free. Our your auntie is just happy that she don't have to drink out of the black water fountain. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm right. saying? Right, so, exactly. So, so from that construct, it's it's like, well, I'm living my best life. I don't have I don't li- I don't have to on a day to day basis adhere to a white man. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But when in actuality, over the, the duration of your life, you're under someone's thumbnail if you're not owning the direction right. of your generational wealth from a spiritual perspective, from a physical perspective, and from a financial perspective. You understand? Because the goal is generational wealth. And, and that's you know, very, very true. And, and so right now, you know, young people that are embracing that concept is really because, you know, you know, older, I would say older than 50, they figure, OK, well, it never happened. It's probably not going to happen. That's kind of the fatalist attitude that they have. So it's our young people that we need to really um, infuse this information into so they can start making the right, uh, uh, right decisions at the right now. So that they can create that generational wealth. Mm. Yeah, that's the goal, man. I I wish that uh, I could stand on a pillar and just like like artificially inseminate the information in everyone. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. It's a gift of application, you know, but it's not that easy. You know, so. Yeah, because some will receive it and some some will not. Well, if you want a a, a platform, we, I definitely have several platforms where you can oh. <laughs> <laughs> where you can uh, uh, infuse that information into people because that's our goal for 2017. Really I mean, 2019. I mean, 2019. Because it's so easy. It's, I mean, it, it's not rocket science. Right. Well, I know when I read uh, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that's pretty much what that book was about, was just learning and understanding and recognizing and identifying opportunities and making the decision based upon an entrepreneur mindset and versus a kind of, uh, I guess that would have been an academic or a safe space, what they calculate as space as as safe but really in actuality is the least safe place you can be because somebody else is uh, controlling your destiny yeah that rich dad poor dad was a hell of a book because it, it actually had like actual numbers in the book like where you can tangibly see like how much you're how much are you making how much is this property worth like like it's it's just a man it's man i just we we enter you know the game. I don't know if you've ever played the, the cash flow game that uh, Robert Kurosaki uh, created back. He did it back no, in. I, I, no, I've never played it, but I read the book. Okay, no, the the game is absolutely phenomenal. So we at the holidays time. Well, I bought it a couple of Christmases ago, and so we play it because uh, it, it could take. It's like Mon- I, it's Monopoly and life on steroids. So. I remember my sister's in the real estate industry, and uh, my and they own and we they everybody owns property. But I remember when my nephew, not knowing what his parents did, he kept seeing this card that kept popping up going duplexes, and if you have any duplexes, then you can sell them for whatever the amount eighty thousand a piece. If you depending anywhere from a three to four to five to eight um, duplex, and so. After about the third or fourth round around the board, he goes, what are these duplex? What are these plexus things? What are they talking about? So his parents explain. He went into probably your mode, uh, Frederick. He went, okay. So it was like he, 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 he went and that was what he was getting. He was manifesting the purchase of these duplexes. So he won the game the first time out because he happened to own um, – 16 duplexes and a car wow. popped up that said you can sell them at 135,000 a piece. And wow. so he made over a million dollars and and the whole idea of the game is to get out of the rat race and get into the cash flow of life, which is the investment side, which is what you're doing. So you actually would love that and they have a kid version so you can teach your children how to do it as well. I went property shopping with my daughter. I literally just left looking at a property. I went shopping with her today. Oh, okay. Like, I, like, I'm literally like, like reinforcing every single how, day. How I also have this thing, too. Also have this. Here's my understanding. If mom and dad went to college, 
right? Mm-hmm. And I give them everything that I learned. They don't have to go to college. It's just <laughs> my humble opinion. It's, 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 it's like I'm just handing off everything that I've learned. Right. So, so your life should be accelerated. Your mind should be accelerated. Mm-hmm. I think we get into this thing where, okay, you go to college, but, but when in actuality... Like, it's, it's supposed to be, ele- everything is supposed to be elevated from generation to generation to generation to right. generation. If I took, if, if I took the white man book and internalized it, you shouldn't have to read the white man's book <laughs> and internalize it again. It, yeah. it, 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 it should be simple. Like, like, take my genius. God already made you talented. Use your talent with my pragmatic experience, with my information, and you elevate it. Yeah. If, it, if you want to become a doctor, you go to college. But if you just want to go to college and just for a four-year degree, and but if, but if you need college to be a lawyer, a doctor, or whatever the case may be, it requires that, then you should go. But if you're an entrepreneur, I think we need to teach our kids we don't necessarily need college because, because if, cause if you think about it pragmatically, you're going to owe Sally Mae, you're going to owe your rent, you're going to owe your car payment. You're going to owe on your cell phone. You're going to jeopardize owe your future. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're already in debt when you get started. In fact, it's already auctioned off. It's, it's already auctioned off. Right, it's exactly. Already- in fact, I went to a meeting recently, and that's what they're suggesting that uh, young people get nano certificates. Uh, that actually immediately gets, you know, they learn a, a, a craft or a skill and that they can immediately get into that industry, you know, within a two-year two, to two year period. And then, and, and, and that basically, and these were all educators. These are all uh, community colleges, and they're all saying, you know, unless you want to be a professional, a doctor, lawyer, CPA, which requires those kind of educators. If you want to be an educator, you need those degrees. But other than that, you know, tech is where you need to be. So you, you can get into that. If you want to be in the industry, there's a two-year certificate for that. So it's almost saying the two-year college format is it gets you quick, fast, and in a hurry into a marketplace, whether you want to be an employee or you want to be a um uh, an entrepreneur because you can use those skill sets. And that's one of the things I think for us as black people that at one point we went to school to be plumbers and we, we learned trades and you create your businesses out of those trades. But now those options are not there. Everybody's encouraged their kids to go get a four year degree uh, to, so you can work for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Now that's expensive. No, it, 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 it's u- uberly expensive, and I'm just a bottom line guy. How much is it, and how much how much equity am I getting out of it? Now, you Fred, know, if, 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 if the math is upside down, there's no reason to do it. Frederick, I want to I want to go back to um, what one of one of the things that we started talking about at the beginning of this interview. We're talking about some of the properties that you have. Now, are are these are these leased out to entrepreneurs or just uh, residents? So, oh, so I own a, a, a apartment building. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So, I see. So, it's, so, it's, uh, so yeah. Because, like yeah, it's, yeah. Because one of the challenges that we see with a lot of minority entrepreneurs, they're leasing properties, but they're not owning those properties. So they get. At some point, they get kicked out of those properties. So they spend a lot of money dressing up these properties for their business. They, they And then a year or two after, the landlord comes in and kick them out because this this is all tenant improvement. And, and you know, the, the landlord doesn't have to pay them back anything. So we're trying to encourage many entrepreneurs that they need to purchase a building and then lease it out to others instead of rent. Yeah, yeah. Here's the backwards part to that. So, so you would lease a space and then rent the space out. Yeah, it's, it's the most asinine thing that I think. <laughs> uh, nail tech, beauty salon. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's asinine. Yeah. And it's like okay, okay. We have ten booths. Yeah. All 10 of us are going to drop our ego. We're going to believe in group economics. The mortgage is $4,000. Everybody put in $400. We'll pay the property tax in December, and we own this space. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. And we have to get 10 signatures to do anything on this property. Now, obviously, it's going to be this dissension. It's going to be this. There may be some. It's, it's, you're not going to get 10 people to agree right. nine out of 10 times. Whatever. But at the end of the day, common sense, most of the time, will prevail. Right. And, and if seven out of 10 agree, the other 10, the other three, will be pressured in, into agreeing. But, 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 that, but, that's, but that's the side thing. What I will say this. If you can get 10 people to rent for $400 or $300, you can get 10 people to own the space. Mm -hmm. See, see this Willie Lynch syndrome and <laughs> yeah. uh, the, uh, the Willie Lynch syndrome and, 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 and us believing that we can't trust one another is, yeah. is one of the more dumbest things ever. It's I have the utmost trust. I mean, like, like, I don't even go with that mindset. Yeah. You understand? Like, yeah. we've been tricked to believe that we got to sign 13 documents before we trust one another. That's right. stupid. Yeah, That's it's ridiculous. But we'll hire, we'll hire a non-black agent, a non-black this to represent us for everything else. Whether whether they get five percent on us buying our house, whether they get ten percent of our acting career or basketball career or whatever the case may be. Yeah, it's just it's it's, it's just amazing how we will trust a bald-headed man mm -hmm. that we've never met before, mm -hmm. and we work with these people every day, and we know how they live, we yeah. know what they do, we know right. where they go, we know. Who, who their boyfriend is, who right. their girlfriend is, how many kids they have, and yet we won't trust them. I hear so. you, man. I hear you. <laughs> With that being said, man, we're going to have to wrap it up right now. We're at the top of the hour. So, Frederick, man, we really appreciate your insight and uh -huh. your information. We want to get you in the studio, though. So let's right. let's schedule some time in January so we can okay. get you in here so the people can okay. see you and and uh, you can disseminate some of that great information, okay? It was fantastic, right. and uh, I appreciate you. it. So we definitely would love to have you in the studio. Uh, so we'll work on that, and I'll see you at the gym next week. All right. Thank you, Crystal. Take, uh -huh. take care, my brother. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. And we will take a break. Yeah, we're yeah. at the top of the hour, so we're going to take a break. Just remember our number here is 323-293-3375. That's 323-293-3375. 3375. Give us a call here on the Business Zone. And you're listening to Crystal and Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. Take a break. Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business-ready, contract-ready, and bank loan-ready. It also provides back-office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186. Hello, meet Larry. 
Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because uh -huh. she uses... So we're back on the business zone with... Crystal. And Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. And uh, Crystal, who do we have in the studio today? We have one of RBD's Recycling Black Dollars lifetime member. All right. And she's been involved and supportive of RBD for a very long time. So we're very happy to have her as a lifetime member. That's amazing. And uh, she's also, uh, she's just become a published author. Oh, wow. And so, you know, and then she, as well, she has... Um, oils that she creates, and she has one called Obama Oil. Now, when I first met her about 10 years ago, I guess, yeah, it's been about 10 years, that's how long I've been around RBD, mm -hmm. um, and been in the capacity I've been. She had, she was Miss Obama. She has a jacket that's Miss Obama, uh, uh, but of uh, course uh. that was when, and then she has her oil. So we're going to have her tell us about uh, this relationship she has with Barack Obama. Uh, <laughs> and, uh. and, and I've learned some interesting new things about her as of late. And she's an amazing mom she, and grandmom. Uh, her little baby girl, ha grandbaby, has been growing up with RBD. Uh, uh, how old is she now? Five. She's five, so she's been coming since she was a very... She's been coming to the breakfast mixer since she was born. That's yeah. amazing. So, so we are very happy you here. have you here, um, Hyacinth. is Hyacinth McLeod. And what's the name of your book? Oh, the name of my book is Entrepreneurial Women of Faith. Sharing our anchor scriptures, sharing the scriptures we use to keep us anchored to, focus on, and motivated in our businesses. Okay, and I see Miss Deborah Thorne was uh, wrote the foreword. Amen. All right, I've known her over thirty years. Yeah, right, because Deborah's yeah. been out there as the informational diva so for a while. So yeah, I'm on page fifty-eight through sixty. Excellent. And my favorite scripture is found in First Thessalonians five eighteen, and it would be. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, because gratitude is my Savior. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, well so, Ms. Iason McLeod, welcome to the Business Zone. Thank you so much. So now that I know I'm your so mom is Jamaican, I under, that explains a lot <laughs> about All those high, jobs. Yeah, that explains a whole lot about you. She had about 10, 10 jobs, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, but she's always got her little thing, but yeah. she's such a pleasant person. But I just learned that she has, you do also a hospice. I'm a Christian science nurse. Okay. I am a, actually a lifelong Christian scientist. And Christian science is a religion that was founded by a woman named Mary Baker Eddy in 1866. Not to be confused with Scientology. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a Bible-based religion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm very grateful to have been raised this way. My, my mother actually went to the only Christian science church in jamaica really? in kingston yeah and in which Christ one is that it's there's only one it's on green street somewhere in kingston downtown or downtown or i think it's downtown because okay. i did visit it one time oh, okay. and in christian science you go to sunday school until you're 20 and um i'm just so grateful i've never met anyone that is seeking for the deep profound understanding of what it means to be made in the image and likeness of god the way christian science has taught me oh, okay. to understand That's that. That's amazing. Okay, okay. Very, very grateful. So a Christian science nurse, which is what I've been, it'll be 10 years on February 9th of n next year, is a person that cares for someone, and the only treatment that they use is prayer. 
It's essentially the way Jesus healed. Yeah, I know all of that. Yeah, because yeah. the way Jesus done healed. done that in my mom's church, too. Oh, cool. Yeah. The way Jesus healed is he saw people the way God saw them. And there's no better way to to bring wholeness to someone than to do that. And it's profound, spiritual, Christly love. So this is what I do. I mean, this is work. You yeah. know, I mean, I get paid to love my fellow brothers and sisters. That's good. Yeah, that's and, for that and it's yeah, it is, and it's very um, self fulfilling and self preserving because I have to to think that way takes care of me too. Yeah, right. it yeah. Does, it does. And, and you and see, and it helps you see the good in the people. Exactly. In today's world, sometimes you're like, okay, yeah. you know, you got to really think about the the good about oh, people there. So, yeah. And I know Hyacinth is always in an amazing mood, yeah. and so now that explains a lot. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's I'm I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. I told somebody today, it seems like God is getting better, but that can't be the case. I must be getting more and more out of the way so I can Uh really reap the blessings and know. I mean, I've had this understanding of myself ever since I could form thoughts and words. And I'm so grateful to my grandmother, actually, who was introduced to Christian science by a Jewish woman. Oh. Yeah, she had an enlarged heart. She was diagnosed here in America. Mm -hmm. And she was working for this Jewish woman in at the Park Sheraton Hotel in Manhattan. And the lady told her that my grandmother was so cute, she cannot remember the lady's name. She never could. But she said, this lady um, told her, Doris was my grandmother, she said, you know, um, your health is interfering a little bit with the work, and I would like for you to go and see a Christian science practitioner who is a person that devotes their life to helping turning people's thoughts back to God. Whatever the dis-ease is, and that word dis-ease mm-hmm. means lack of mm-hmm. ease, mm-hmm. not always physical. Right, right. Right. You know, it could be financial, relationship, <laughs> I like whatever that. is causing the disharmony. So she, you know, and my grandmother was very foreign to America, very thick Jamaican accent, not in good health. And this lady is telling her to go see these people. At first, it didn't fly so well. So about three weeks later, the lady actually said, you know, Doris, unless you do something, I may not be able to have you come back because her health was interfering with her work. Mm -hmm. And the lady, my grandmother said she could not afford to give up the friendship, much less the job. So she said, what does she have to lose? When she came back to this woman's house to work, I never forget this conversation with my grandmother. She said she did not utter a syllable. When the lady saw her at the door, she said, Doris, this is you, because she had seen a completely healed person. Hmm. So then the ripple effect, my grandmother now writes back to my great-grandmother, who was taking care of my mother and her two brothers, saying she's found this new way of thinking. And a Christian science healing is far more than just a physical um Healing. It's a it's, it's transform of mind. Well. Oh. So she writes back, and they start going to Sunday school in Jamaica at the one church. Mm-hmm. And then when my grandparents can make things well enough for the kids to come up, they come up to the Christian Science Church in Harlem and start going to Sunday school. Mm-hmm. I must tell you, my mother still is very active in that church that she came up to at 13 wow. to this day. As a matter of fact, I told you she's coming on Tuesday from yeah. New York. We have to have her just around her church schedule. Only two Sundays will she miss <laughs> to get back to that church in New York. <laughs> that's how, I'm telling you. Really? That's how oh. dedicated. She holds a position, has held that position for 20 years at that church. You're only supposed to have it for three years, the dedication. Right. But, you know, it makes, she's so wonderful. That's Thank amazing. You. Thank that's you, That's wonderful. So, if so I can, how do you incorporate great. your oils into Oh, the, that's a Actually, it, it gets one day I was at Broadview. Broadview is where I work. It's in Montecito Heights, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. off of the 110 Freeway Avenue 43 exit. Mm-hmm. I walked by and one of the other nurses said, I need some orange oil. And I said, I have orange oil. And I didn't know how the oils could work. Well, what we do is we call it cleansing and bandaging because I tell you guys, I see things that I really have to unsee because if I got drawn into that mental picture Mm -hmm. or material picture, I could not do the work. But Mm -hmm. we're taught to look away from the body as the Bible tells us. So we do cleansing and bandaging on areas of the body that need to be cleansed and bandaged every day. So sometimes there's a very odorous 
result. Mm -hmm. And the oil defrays the odor. Mm. So I was so grateful for my fragrance oil business to come and be a part of this Oh, wow. Work. Yeah, it was really a blessing. Amazing. Yeah. So how did you get into the oils? The oils. Oh, that's a story. Now, that goes back to my mom. She found a fragrance called Ombre Rose in the oil form. <laughs> okay. And she really, I mean, she had liked the fragrance in the spray. Uh -huh. But when she found it in the oil, she said, mm, that's really good because it's really authentic. And it's actually better for you because you don't have all the alcohol and chemicals that the sprays right. have. So she said, if I like that, a lot of people would like that. Mm -hmm. And she did some research, and she's so clever. With her daughter's name being Hyacinth, she named the business Higher Sense Fragrance Oils. Higher Sense. Oh, I like that. She is wow. quite the genius. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this so, is something you and your mom started. My it. mother actually started, started it. started it. Okay. But then she had to go back to New York to take care of those dear parents mm -hmm. who were of hers that were married for 63 years. Wow. He lived to be 103, and she was 89. And I'm telling you... Uh, my mother must sleep very well every night because she took care of her parents to their last mm -hmm. breath. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, she's actually a Christian science nurse So also. do you have family still in Jamaica, or did everybody Not migrate? Not in Jamaica. Everybody's mm -hmm. either passed on or migrated. Right yeah. Okay. But, you know, my mother will be 80 on August 10th. Oh, wow. She's a salsa dancer. Oh, yeah. And is there a picture I can yeah, show? I, wow, <laughs> yeah. Wow, she doesn't look 80. Wow. She's a salsa dancer. Look to the camera. Oh, okay. yeah. Right there. This is Hyacinth's uh, parent, mom, and her family. Your mom is beautiful. Oh, she is inside and out. And my plan, with God's will, is to celebrate her in Jamaica yeah. in August okay. for her beautiful. 80th birthday. Yeah. So now her when birthday is in August, huh? August And when 10th. did she come to America? <clears throat> oh, wow. When did she come originally? Uh -huh. Yeah. That was when she was a teenager at the time that my grandparents oh, okay. made it well enough for her to come up. In, to Harlem, and that's okay. where she. That's but where you she were still, born here. I was born in the Bronx. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I mean, in, in the United States. Yeah, the United States. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. I have visited Jamaica, <laughs> okay. and I love it. I could be there right now, anytime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you, I have a daughter that sort of looks like a Marley. I never wanted her to go by herself because that little free spirit she has and that look. <laughs> I was like, they're gonna scoop you up over there. <laughs> but we did actually go on a cruise, um, May eighth of two thousand seventeen. We climbed Duns River Falls together. No, I love Dunn and River. And before I had my daughter, climbing Dunn River Falls was the most amazing thing I had ever done. My mother took me when I graduated from high school. Amazing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how, how progressive is the business, the oil business for you? Well, I have to tell you, I work 40 plus hours a week. As a matter of fact, they called me in today. Because somebody called off, which I have never done, not one time in what's going to be 10 years in February. They know when I'm on the schedule, they don't have to look for me. Right. They often call me when other people when I'm not no, on the schedule. Yeah, because you're, yeah. you're the today, I'm very dependable. No, yeah. couldn't do it today. <laughs> yep, I had I had a prior commitment. I appreciate <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you making us a priority. <laughs> yeah, well, she's been she's been working her way here for a little while. Yeah, and yeah, that's right. Came, yeah. And I'm ready to come. <laughs> yeah, this so, is definitely overdue, and I'm so grateful to be here. So let's talk about the Obama oil. Okay, the Obama oil. Well, I first must tell you, especially even after hearing this wonderful first lady, Michelle Obama, speak mm. and write that book, I can't tell you how grateful I am for the moment that I actually had with our with my president. The yeah. only she person. actually had this her relationship with Barack Obama. <laughs> where, I mean, where and when did you meet him? I met him in November of two thousand six, actually before he held the title of president, uh -huh. at the NAACP Image Awards in Pasadena. So this is a selfie? No. Oh, no, it's not a selfie. Someone took it. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And and like I said, as I live and hear and experience what we're experiencing now, I'll tell you, I actually met that one, too. But because of the way he performed the day I met him, yeah. we didn't want to be on film, on a right. camera picture right. with right. him. I was with a friend of mine that happens to live from a wheelchair who has since passed on. Mm -hmm. And upon approaching him, my friend would tell me he wants to talk to whoever. So he said he wanted to talk to Mr. Trump. We walked up and he said, he looked down and he said, what's wrong with him? Hmm. I said, nothing is wrong with him. He has a radio program. Oh, everybody has a radio program. Hmm. We just wanted to disappear from him. Yeah. So that's the only reason that I don't also have a picture with 
So he, whatever. he has bad energy. Huh? Yeah, I mean, and he's been consistent. Yeah. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand why I was so affected by the outcome of that election. Yeah. I had forgotten about that experience A lot because of people, I had my own personal experience. Ah, so you knew him for yes. the real, because yeah. you actually yeah. met him. And yeah. he, yeah. he, you know, this man is in a wheelchair, so he just assumed something was wrong. Yeah. Wrong is the yeah. word that he used. I yeah. was like, no. Yeah, he doesn't have... Any sympathy for anyone that's afflicted with anything, mm-hmm. he, he, he equates that to failure. It says when he talked to, to uh, um, uh, Senator McCain that he got he was captured, so therefore you have to be a failure. It's, I don't know what kind of warp thinking, and it probably, obviously, our mindset and our thought processes has come from our parents. Yeah. So obviously that's... From his parent, and I do remember hearing that his mother was very cold and um, verbally abusive. Oh, so okay. I guess that's probably where it came from. That mm-hmm. explains a little bit, at least. Yeah, right? but that yeah. doesn't mean you got to still embrace it. Exactly, because his behavior is just because you still, as an adult, I was listening to somebody, <clears throat> and and somebody was they, he was asking him, and this is this was. Recent. Recently, yeah. and so he was he was asking the person. And he said, so he needed him to do something. And he went on to explain and why he was this person because of how he was raised. So he says, so how old are you? Oh, really? And he said um, he was twenty six, twenty seven. He said, well, get over it. Exactly. Because at this point, you're no longer a child, and whatever experiences you had with your parents are in the past. So now you have the capacity to change who you are. So get over that and move on. <laughs> and I was like, well, there you have it. Thank because you. you do as an adult, as mm-hmm. a person, mm-hmm. you I, can work through anything. And how dare you think you could run a country being that way? Because mm-hmm. you, cause you're egotistical and, oh my goodness. and narcissistic and all that sort of well, stuff. We'll, so We'll find out in a few months. <laughs> <laughs> you're waiting, huh? Exactly. I, I, right now, all hell is, about, is breaking after loose. After Cohen. Yeah, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. It, it would be ama- it's amazing that every aspect from everything, you got like 19 <laughs> fences closing in on you. Yeah. <laughs> It's just absolutely we'll, like wow. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll so, see. So, so the Obama with the oil. Obama oil, sort of the same way that that Ombre Rose came to my mom. Mm-hmm. This oil was presented to me with this name, and I'm like, well, we all love that name, mm-hmm. and that smells really good too. Yeah. So I ran with it, and I had the little story of meeting him to add yeah, to it, yeah. and it has really affected my human experience in a way that I can't even tell That's you. Great. I mean, great. it's so well received, yeah. and I just like I said. Said, um, Michelle Obama was at the forum on my birthday, really? November 15th, really? like literally around the corner oh, from my yeah. house. Were you able to go? I was not able to go, but look how good God is. My mother and I joked about how they're watching just Michelle on the monitors the same time, Thursday, 8 p.m. Guess what's on OWN? Oprah and Michelle. I said, I got both of them. They only got Michelle at the forum. Oh, okay. And it was, it was so wonderful. But then I got snatched away to my favorite restaurant in Beverly Hills, which just happens to be called Gratitude. Oh, yeah. And that was amazing. Yeah, I love that, so, that restaurant. So, Knowing her, yeah. she will meet Michelle yeah. at some uh, point. Uh, actually, I, and the reason I was okay with it, too, because I did see her when she came to the shrine on mm-hmm. May 5th. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I haven't been one-on-one yet, but that's coming, it's like coming. you said. Yeah. Okay, that, that will happen for her because she seems to be always in the right <laughs> in the places right at place. the right time. <laughs> so I have another question oh, for you. Oh, anything. Do you have any family members who live or lived in New Jersey? New Jersey. Um Mantle, like the mantle. Burlington, New Jersey, or something. Mm, like that. that are with the last name, you mean? McLeod, yeah. Hyacinth Spe- McLeod. Spelled that way? McLeod? Hi- Hyacinth McLeod. You know another Hyacinth McLeod? Yes. No. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Yes. Really? Well, yes. we, I must meet her. Uh, and she has two daughters, remember? No. I told you about. Really? Wait, the person's name is Hyacinth McLeod? And she has two daughters. And her, and name, her last name is... One of them is, looks just like No, you. this is a divine <laughs> intervention here. I mean, remember, both of those names are so we unusual. We were just talking about yeah. them a few nights ago. Oh, oh, okay. You know what he's talking about? Yeah, I do. Wow. <laughs> so, Gilbert, I must ask you, her last name is spelled... I know Hyacinth is spelled the same because yeah. we're named after the flower. Same but her way. last name... 
in okay. the cloud. Now, I mean, I've had, I've, I've wanted to meet all the hyacinths yes. in the world, but I have to meet the hyacinth in the cloud. It's been a long time since I've seen her. I've seen her in 1986. I now, think. is she also Jamaican? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of yeah. course. Most and of the hyacinths. And she kind of looks are. like your mom too, so that's why oh I'm saying I'm gosh. asking. Do you have a family? Is member? she on Facebook? I mean, let's start I don't there. Because after after 1986, I haven't really had any contact with her. That is so well, cool. Is that she ironic? Two daughters and one of them look just like What? You. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is well, my mom had a daughter and a son, and we both lost sons. I, I think I put that in yeah, my you did. bio. Yeah, right. yeah um, my mother's was so much more tragic. Oh, my gosh. When I was six months old in the Bronx, I was upstairs with the babysitter, and my mom had gone maybe to the unemployment office, somewhere very innocent. Mm -hmm. And she came back in a taxi, and she asked the taxi driver to make a U-turn to avoid what happened. I just found out recently that the taxi driver wasn't either able or willing to make the U-turn. And my three-and-a-half-year-old brother, Tony, saw my mother in the taxi, ran out in the street, and was killed instantly your, by a car. Your brother? That, my brother. Wow. Oh, yeah. Man. And, Sorry. you know, my mother is so gracious. You would never know anything like that yeah. ever happened to her. I mean, you know, because, wow. I mean, I still have my moments about my yeah. son, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, before she could even unlock the car door, yeah. it was all done. Oh, and, wow. Sorry and, you hear. know, yeah. And yeah. her strength is just, um, I don't want to get my face right here. <laughs> but um, so then fast forward. December 9th of 1991, I'm working at UCLA, just came back from maternity leave, had my big bounce, and my ex-husband is um, was 6'7", he's passed on to 6'7", 250 pounds, and I'm a good-sized girl, we have this <laughs> huge, adorable son, and I'm working at UCLA in the School of Nursing, interestingly enough. And I, I know I was working in the um, Office for Protection of Human Research, uh -huh. and I worked for the non-medical um, research projects. Mm -hmm. Just came out of a meeting, my first meeting, back to work, and I get a call from the babysitter, and my friend Sharin had transferred the call, but when she transferred the call, she said, uh-oh, it's the babysitter. And I'm like, well, what's wrong with it being the babysitter? The babysitter was screaming in hysterics mm. because apparently the baby, it was a SIDS. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Whew, so there's nothing I can't sustain yeah after I that mean, yeah you know yeah, the loss of a child is just yeah. that yeah. thing that I you just that. you know and then people don't know what to say they come up and they say oh yeah, i understand exactly. and i ask them oh really when did you lose your child yeah. and i don't uh, not in a mean way but just because right. you really don't right. unless yeah. you have right, right. Yeah. and and the strength i mean they say if it doesn't make you stronger if it doesn't yeah. kill you to make you stronger. Well, it shapes your life it's, i you am the lost. female version of hercules right here yeah. okay <laughs> and then my mother is the president of that company <laughs> she's the queen yeah. Oh, the queen. They call her Zena, the princess warrior. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And then I'm so grateful for my faith. And, you know, I'm a woman of acronyms. Um, and I love friendship. Um, my next, the, the book that I actually write will be about friendship. But the acronym for faith that was revealed to me by God is Friends Are Instrumental to healing. I love that. It, I do I too. That. Thank you. I mean, That's because it's, it is a guy got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, they are. Because Friends it's so true. Friends are instrumental, to, instrumental healing. to healing. And then I also want to tell you about the book that I will be writing on friendship. It's going to be at least 11 titles, but the 10 of them will be qualities of friendship that actually spell out the word friendship. Oh, wow. So like the F will be forgiveness, probably the most important one. Mm -hmm. The R will be respect. Mm -hmm. The I will be integrity. Mm -hmm. The E will be endurance. Mm -hmm. The N will be nurturing. Mm -hmm. The D will be dependability. Mm -hmm. The S will be sincerity. You speak, girl. The H will be honesty. Mm -hmm. The other I will be inspiration. And the P will be patience. Oh, I love and that. And then wow. in, in the patience, I will segue. I love plays on words. I was actually a contestant on Wheel of Fortune oh, yeah? when I was expecting. Jasmine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've with that, always been. With that being said, hold that thought. Okay. okay. Don't, don't, forget, don't forget okay. what you're saying. Sure. Thank We're you. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break and uh, we'll come right back and we really want to hear this. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> so you're oh, listening to God. the Business Zone with. 
Christo. Gilbert Buchanan and Hyacinth McLeod, the second very one. special guest, the <laughs> second one. <laughs> and, and you guys are going to find out whatever that mystery is, right? <laughs> so let's yeah. take a break. Okay. Hello, meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186. Hey, it's Dawn of DS Fitness bringing you your get up and move exercise of the week. Squat hill claps. Ladies, if you want to tighten and tone your lower body, this is it. Very powerful, explosive exercise. Work with our hamstrings, our quads, our glutes, our side abductors, your entire lower body. Starting with the feet shoulder apart, we want to sit back into our heels, powering out to a jump, clap your heels, back down to starting position. There you have it, squat heel claps. Now for more exclusive Get Up and Move exercises, visit GetUpErica.com and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. See you on Monday. Hello, meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork. So we're back on the Business Zone with... Krista. Hyacinth McLeod. And Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. And we were having a wonderful conversation here with Miss McLeod, my Jamaican <laughs> Paisano. <laughs> Yacht. I'm a yachty. <laughs> She's a yachty, just like I'm on. <laughs> so, so we were learning some amazing things here about some of the oils that she produced within her business. So, um, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. I was actually just telling you about the book on friendship and yes. how I'm so I've always I had ever since I can remember. I loved learning the English language and the correct use of it, and oh, just yeah. words and and you know ebonics or whatever mm-hmm. hit my it hits my ears like yeah. whoa. Yeah. So um, I was saying about my book on friendship that is the acronym for friendship, and friendship is probably 
other than God's protection of us, is probably this one of the more special gifts that I appreciate from God. Mm. Yeah. And that's was the segue into my other my newest business, mm-hmm. which is called Friendship Frames. Oh. And I don't know if you all know, but the yellow rose is a symbol of friendship. Oh, yeah. And that's why this is called Friendship Frames, because they all have a yellow rose. And then a friendship frame involves you giving me a name and I give you a frame. Mm. So in this case, we have Angela, and it tells you, the origin of the name, oh. the meaning of the name, and a beautiful paragraph about the person. And in the stem, it says, Love Hyacinth. That would be the receiver, oh, the giver's beautiful. name. So I don't know if you're going to put that Yeah, up. I've actually had, well, not, I did it from someone, someone else. See, so Chris, I don't have the Love Hyacinth see, part. Oh, right. Crystal, but I do have I my name. I haven't given you a yellow rose yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you haven't, huh, for friendship. <laughs> see, it's very difficult for me to really call someone friend oh. until I feel like they has certain they've proven themselves in a certain way oh, okay and i can certainly say she crystal crystal mitchell is a friend a true friend oh Aww, that's beautiful i is. can say that i yeah. second that thought <laughs> so it's amazing so i owe her uh, a yellow rose oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's very nice <laughs> and friendship is very important to me um you know through probably as you said as you uh, recited what the acronym mm, yeah, of friendship those means. Those qualities. Mm-hmm. I have a, um, I have five friends, six actually. There's seven of us, but there are five of us, five that are intimately still very close to me, and we talk and interact on a regular basis. Okay. And through whatever life challenges yeah. um, that I've gone through. They have been there, and that's my female friends, but then I have a core of a male, male friends friend, sure. that also have been there that I can truly call my friends. I've been very, very blessed uh, with some incredible people, yeah. and um, you know, you know, God gives you certain spirit to be able to discern who <laughs> yeah, are the who people that in. you bring yeah. into your life. And so I, um, if they were not right to be in that space, then God took them away immediately sure. before they could create any harm exactly. uh, to me as a person. Mm-hmm. And uh, so a friendship is very important. I think that's an amazing book to be written. Oh, yeah. Because so many people don't recognize the value of having lifelong friends mm-hmm. and that in some cases, you know, that's even better than family, right? Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. because friends, um, uh, friends are... They they go through different things with you without judgment. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, so when it comes down to and and I always say to people when you're looking for your mate, that's what you want. You want someone a who is exactly. a friend because mm-hmm. when you get past the lust and the attraction and all that yeah. sort of stuff, the core yeah. that will keep you together yeah. is the friendship it's because so you don't judge. You love in spite of, yeah. and you forgive unconditionally, exactly. and you forgive, so it helps you get over that yeah. stuff um, and get through that stuff. Exactly. So when you look at people that have been with each other for 50, 20, 50, 60, 70, 80. They have to I be know. friends. They have to be, have friends, to be friends. Because Yeah, like the Bushes, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah right, America exactly. For 73 years. years. And I was surprised uh-huh. that it even lasted this long. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. I just knew time. I have friends. I have one of my good friends, one of my friends, his grandparents had been married for over 50 something years. Mm-hmm. And when his grandfather died, he said that they couldn't even get back from the funeral. After she went to the mm-hmm. funeral to send her husband away, she died that night. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she, you know. Broken heart. It, a yeah, broken heart. They, they, so I was very surprised. That he even lasted because eight, eight months yeah. after, eight months after yeah. his wife. I just You're right. knew. You're right. I was thinking he would have been gone like. Like when he went he in the hospital month, afterwards, yeah, I just like, month. okay, he's on his way out. Just like um, that lady, um, what's the actress, um, what's her name from Star Trek? And our Debbie Reynolds. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. right, Carrie Fisher. Her daughter yeah. died yeah. like three days before, and then she right. died uh-huh. three days after. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, Muhammad, Muhammad Nazardine, yeah. mm. he was very, very close to his mother. Her name is Amina. Mm-hmm. And so they talked every single day of his life. Mm-hmm. And that was the first call that either one of them got. And wow. so when Muhammad died, um, he died in his office. They had the service, and I was there. And Jackie is very close to the family, right? So Jackie said that she was talking, and Amina gave the eulogy. 
and his mom. His mom. So wow. when she got up to speak, she spoke so well about her son that Pastor, um, because this is at Crenshaw, they, he was very, you know, he was uh, utilized at uh, Crenshaw. So Dr. Price got up and said, well, ain't nothing else for me to say. His mother then said everything. Wow. Yeah. And she was saying her son knew that I could not have survived if he went, if I went, or my son wouldn't have survived if I went before, before him. him. Wow. And so she said, um, so God knows what he's doing. She did this. She was healthy. She was like us right here. And so wow. aunts, not feeble, not anything. That night, Jackie said when they got home from the funeral, um, she said she wanted some ice cream. So Jackie went to get ice cream before she could get back. Same night. The mom died. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so the funeral yeah. for Amina was, was like, like next, next week. week. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. You know, um, I have uh, the patients that I care for. There's uh, one patient that has a set of cousins that visit her like every other Sunday. They just celebrated 71 years of marriage on October 10th wow. of this year. So when I found out, I had, I said, may I please ask to what you owe this? And they said they have similar Values. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were at similar upbringings. They met in elementary school. They're See, so adorable. I would, li- I would like something like that. Oh my god! Yeah, I would like that. That yeah. is. I want to have a know. friend for life. Like exactly. Pe- like penguins. Yeah, they, they mate for, for life. life. Oh, okay. If one of them dies, that's they, it. They go. You know. Yeah. yeah. So and, and and I think and so when you I guess it's it's all in the selection process, right? Mm-hmm. So so my mentality or my thought philosophy is so I meet you as a friend, mm-hmm. and so the same because you hold your child, your friends in a higher standard than you do your mates, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're seeking out friends, you're looking at a whole picture right. to see how they implement and how how you connect with them. Then you introduce them to your friends exactly. and how they all come together because that's your other family, right? Mm-hmm. right. And so then when they mesh like that. And you're like, okay, but we don't do that with mates, right? Right? We 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 meet on some other kind of plane. We, we get on a fast track. <laughs> we, we get on a fast track, right? And you never thing. the friendship get, yeah, never. We bypass a friendship path and just fast track all right. these things. All those things. You know, <laughs> this, I mean, I have I've been blessed. Oh, I have to tell you this. My grandmother, um, I guess she was aware of my love for words and puzzles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget her telling me this cute riddle. She said, what is the best vitamin for friendship? Now, think about in, in answering or guessing. Think about how uh, vitamins are written. I'll give you a hint. Usually with a letter and a number. And, the, uh-huh. and again, it's what's the best vitamin for friendship? I'm just going to tell you, it's so cute. B1. Oh, uh, I like so that. Cute. That's cute. So cute. <laughs> and she was so excited to tell me the little punchline. Oh, yeah, B1. I was thinking V or something <laughs> yeah, like that. No, B1. 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 But you know, it's so true. Yeah, is it? it it's yeah. so true. And it, it's something about that reflection. Yeah. You'll attract the kind of friend that you are. Yeah. And we're, you know? look at Barack. And Michelle, yeah, yeah did I you mean, see that movie? He, yeah, I did. And, and even just <laughs> when you look at when you when they're interacting with each other, when you know, we eight years of, of of watching them interact, he still looks at her the exact same way right. he looked at and her in that, that movie. That, yeah, when that he first, like he is just mesmerized by it, and he's looking at the words coming out her mouth, <laughs> and he's just like hanging on every word, yeah. like oh my god. <laughs> but, I saw. I saw something very funny on Facebook. I don't know if you guys saw it. It showed the four. It showed Barack, Michelle, Bill Clinton, and Hillary at the Bush's funeral. Mm -hmm. And it showed captions above each of them. Yes, I saw that. (laughs) I didn't see that. Oh, you didn't see that? (laughs) Oh, it was awesome. It was so funny. It was like they were, (laughs) they said, the the bubbles over their head um, like cartoons. um, Right. um, Barack said, um, Honey, you better watch out. And Michelle's like, it's getting ready to go down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Bill was over there going, said, he going to knock he him said, out. <laughs> he, she said, Hill, you better not do it. And um, 
Hillary said, I got my blade. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> it was, was so funny. Right. But, but look at, <laughs> and look at that. So that, that right there is an example. Roslyn and Jimmy Carter uh-huh. and, and their connection. Yeah. Bill Clinton, yeah. even whatever they did, yeah. him and Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I've read their, I read Hillary's a story on she was raised to be exactly what she is. Mm-hmm. And then when she met Bill, um, she, very different than because she was raised very conservative and and you know wealthy parents and so forth and Bill was just Bill right <laughs> but there was a connection there yeah, yeah. that's that, that's that. a Opposite basic yeah, it, and it's a basic connection exactly. but you look at them and how through all whatever they've been through they've managed to create whatever they have and then you see the relationship with Michelle and and, and, and and with Michelle even <clears throat> Bush and his wife Laura yeah. Yeah. so when you yeah. look at that span of yeah. all of those presidents yeah. and then you look at Trump yeah. and <laughs> that one and you like know totally that they nice. were never ever 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 they, and I think he was behaving that way because he knew he was a fraud. Yeah. That this, I'm not supposed to he be here. He felt out of place. He felt, like he I am not day. supposed to be here. It's like going to a wedding dressed in yeah, jeans. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, so he knows that because he don't have that. They don't, they don't have that at all. But, but friendship is very important. And I think that yeah. will be an amazing. Oh, it's coming. Book. And thank God for friends like Deborah Thorne. And I'm going to tell you this joke. I met her over 30 years ago. Our our kids went to the Culver City YMCA oh, together. Really? Oh, yeah. That's okay. my girl. And, you know, her last name is Thorne. Uh-huh. Now, here I am with this flower name. and Oh, wow. Hyacinth and Thorne. The way our relationship started, I figured this lady is just going to live out her last name in my life. That, <laughs> because it wasn't so true. Right, exactly. Fast forward 30 years. This woman, I'm going to tell you something. Speaking about relationships, my birthday was November 15th. And I had breakfast with a friend of mine. I had just released my car. I didn't realize the stress um, agent that my car was. Uh So I was like, okay, I'm getting rid of all of them. Uh (laughs) This man is someone that we thought it was going to be life forever, and we are the best of friends. I just left him before I came to the studio. Mm -hmm. I kid you not, November 16th, I got a text from Deborah Thorne about this book project. And do you see the book is here? That's how soon. She wants to demystify the thought that it takes so long to get a book published. Yeah, she has a 60-day thing. So she is going to help me with my friendship book because I saw it happen. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. And then I was available. I don't know that I would have been so available unless I let go. Yeah, Yeah, right, exactly. So we have to clear our thoughts so we can let the good ideas from God manifest in our lives so two things <clears throat> yes one how much do you sell those friendship frames the for? friendship frames are twenty dollars okay and, and they're priceless and they, they are and two how do i get you to do one of those for me and i guess you'll use the name gilbert right so you're gonna have to I research think I have it. all the information that i need you think so <laughs> you've done research you have I think I have all I need really? right now. Really? Oh, now I'm anxious. No. <laughs> I want to know. Because I've done some research on my name, Gilbert, as well. And I kind of find out some things about what Gilbert means, mm-hmm. which I'm very pleased about. I think that's probably why I'm so helpful to people. Oh. Okay. But I want to see what you have. Okay. So well, I give me a little wait. time, a very little time, uh, okay. and I will um, get that to you. All right. Okay. So I'll uh, give you my right. card Look right after this show. <laughs> Look at that. I can't wait. <laughs> so, you know, Deborah and I are writing a book together. Or oh. Actually, we're going to start doing blog posts. It's called What the Hell Were You Thinking? Because of all the stuff that's yeah, going on. Yeah. So you've met Deborah. She was here on the yeah, show. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that uh, we're going to do. But I didn't know you guys had such a close oh, relationship. Oh, yeah. That's my girl. Uh-huh. And then her mother... This is, if this is not full circle, full circle, nothing is. Her mother, who she just lost, her name is Samantha. Mm-hmm. That is my granddaughter's name. Wow. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you and, guys and how, are connected and how many, in a lot of ways. How many Samanthas, you know, a while ago, that yeah. was her mother's name. Yeah. Wow, yeah. And, and I have Samantha Rose. And you may notice the floral 
um, mention of our names. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My mother's name is actually Norma Hyacinth McLeod. Uh-huh. So she actually intended to name me Deborah Hyacinth McLeod. Yeah. I was at a meeting this morning for Black Women for Wellness. They're mm-hmm. sisters at eight. And I saw one of my friends. She's like, hi, Debbie. Because that was my name for 30 years. Oh. Because... On my birth certificate in Jacoby Hospital, they left Hyacinth off. Mm. No, no, they left Deborah off. off and left so them. my birth certificate reads Hyacinth McLeod, although my mother intended my name to be Hyacinth, Deborah Hyacinth McLeod. Wow. So I go to, I'm live, Culver City is my home. That's yeah. where I really grew yeah. up. So it, at 16, I go to the Culver City DMV to get my driver's license, and you have to take your birth certificate right. when you go for the first time. Right. I'm trying to convince this lady at the Culver that City DMV that my name is Debbie because she's looking at my birth certificate. Yeah. I call my mother at work. I'm like, what's wrong with my birth certificate? Yeah. We had never had a reason to pull it out before then. Right. Uh, so I went 14 more years as Debbie. Yeah. On my 30th birthday, I said, okay, it's time for this garden to grow. Yeah. I already had Jasmine, yeah. and I literally just had to start introducing Using myself as Hyacinth. Hyacinth. Oh, wow. And wow. I could write a book about being named Hyacinth. That's amazing. Alone. Because it has been very interesting. <laughs> well, then that's, that's your third. Like, no, right, exactly. Look at that. She already got two books <laughs> and we only got the first <laughs> one. Know. We got to do better, dude. Yeah. We got to do better. I know. Well, now that we have her in our circle, then oh, yeah, I'm she here. will probably You're have a hard time and getting inspire rid of us. Uh, right, exactly. Did you get a chance to yeah. show the book? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the book is called Sharing Our Anchor Scriptures. And it's Entrepreneur Women of Faith. And uh, I'm on page 50. And she's 60. on 58 to 60. So, how do they find? Oh, I know Kim. I know Kim Blackwell. Yeah, I think I know Kim Blackwell. Oh, okay. Let me see who else in this book that I know. <laughs> There's one of my sororities there I must mention. I'm a very grateful member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Oh, Corporate. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> well, I know you. I know Jovita Jenkins. I know Joy Abram. Oh, okay. I know Kim Blackwell. Um, and Deborah's there also. And Deborah's there. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I know. Look at that. I know That's a lot of people. You probably cool. know more of those people. Yeah, so this is the book, everyone. And so, uh, Hyacinth, well, how do we? How do you buy this book? You call Hyacinth at area code 323-421-0345. <laughs> Let's repeat it. Area code 323-421-0345. All righty. So, uh, Heisen, we need to get, I'm going to get you into our um, uh, digital marketing classes that we have so that you can create um, passive income. Yes. Uh, It was a guy that uh, he's been doing, we've been doing these classes for eight weeks. And so, and and it's really a great place for authors to expand uh, their, their audience so that you can sell more books. Oh, okay. And, and at the same time, while you're on your journey to write your next book, next book. you can uh, be blogging about it and earn income, passive income, oh. while you're doing that. Sounds so wonderful. Especially sure what she does. It's just phenomenal. It would be fun. Just, just your history, yeah. your stories. Your stories. Your, yeah. That. See, you have something that a lot of other people don't have. You have stories. Oh, my god. Some people don't Actually, even have one story. Really? Yes. Yeah. You've actually met someone that does. They don't, they don't realize. They don't realize they have a story. Regarding Everyone their business, every story. entrepreneur should have a story. Yeah. But a lot of them, you ask them, "What's your story?" They can't they, tell you. Wow. Yeah. And even worse than that, you ask people, um, "What is special about them? What do they? What was the gift that God gave them?" And they, they have no, they'll know. go, I'm not anything special. Yeah, yeah you are something special yeah. in so many ways. So many. So many ways. But, and, and then I'll go, no, that's not true. Because exactly. I know who they are. And right. sometimes that's why friends are important, mm-hmm. right? No, you are. And let me tell you why you're about special. Yourself. Let me tell right. you something about. But I guess some of us weren't raised to see how special, to, to know how special we, we were. And so that we, brings me to something else I should mention. Two things, actually. Okay. Um, I love to write letters. Nobody writes letters anymore. No. I will put a stamp on a mail and decorate my envelopes and be elated. So I thought, you know, we have this black princess, this real black princess in Meghan Markle, you know. Yeah. So this would be a perfect time to launch my 
Pen Pal Princesses. This is the name of the mentoring program because right. one of my favorite things to do is to mentor young women, right. uh-huh. especially women of color. Right. right. So in Pen Pal Princesses, not only will it encourage them to write letters, which some would never if they weren't a part of this program, because, mm-hmm. I mean, who's writing letters anymore? Right, right. right. Exactly. Then it will bring out the qualities of the pal is synonymous with friendship. It will bring out the qualities with friendship, of friendship. And then princesses will not only bring out the qualities and let them know that they own right now the qualities of a princess, but let them know that they too could be this princess that we have. Mm-hmm. And the other um, org- uh, program that I just gotten confirmed at Crenshaw High Senior to senior, another play on words. Mm-hmm. I want to bring senior citizens with together high with senior. high school seniors. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah that'd be yeah. fantastic. And, and it's senior two with a heart and two with a heart oh, around wow. the two. That's and amazing. They just the lady just told me we want this, yeah. and it's going to start in January. And so that's where the digital marketing will come in. That oh, could okay. be both of those could be your blogs. Oh, great! Okay. And then you are expanding that around the world. Yeah, and at the same time. Uh, creating passive revenue, well, either for the program, right? Uh, for yourself, I mean, yeah. the amount of money that is actually generated is enough oh. to share all through whatever you're doing. Sure. But that would be an excellent thing for you to do. Yeah, because there's a senior center and a high school in every city in the world. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know. Now, since we're on an international airwave here, okay, your original ideas. If I were you, I would kind of hold on oh, to those okay. and not Be broadcast careful. it. Because right. you don't want to see this pop up well, somewhere, somewhere and you go, that's oh, my idea. That's fine. Right. Because what you just mentioned is pretty easy to sure. create. Yeah. So I can see someone with or that. Or go get my patent. That's what yeah, I'm talking about. Go get your whole, so quick, get your domain let's get it name, trademarked. get it acclaimed. I mean? Exactly. So yeah. that it, both of so them are yours. I wouldn't share too much more about okay. this on the air. Okay, I appreciate that because advice. Because this is a video as well, so mm-hmm. it's going to be up on YouTube. Okay. So a lot of viewers are going to go there and they're going to... They, that's a great idea. Let me do it. I'm in England, but she's in the U.S. Right. Let right. me do this. You so, what I'm so that's why you got to get it in print. Yeah. So exactly. I'll yeah. send you some yeah. information. Yeah. And I, So are you working on Wednesday evenings? Oh, my gosh. I work. All the time. Uh-huh. And yeah, because we care for people. Okay. Holidays and weekends right. mean okay. nothing to us. Right. So I'm going to so. send you some information on what that looks so like. So is that eight-week course? It's actually ongoing. You just oh, pop okay. in when you want to pop in. And it's in Wednesday at what time? From 530 to 730. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think yeah, I'm so going to okay. pop in one of these. Yeah, Wednesdays. so we're our last one for 2018 is next Wednesday. Okay. And then after that, we start back up again. In and what's the date next Wednesday? I think uh, it's the, the 18th or the 19th. 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 I think it's the 19th. Okay. So you can check it out. It's not in the beginning of the year, okay. um, but um, yeah, because that, that would be a great way. That would be a great uh, platform. And where is that meeting held? At uh, Los Angeles Urban League. Is and it? is there a cost for that meeting? Uh-uh. Oh, my gosh. I, it just amazes me. <laughs> oh, how much resources out how there? How much resources this one oh, woman Oh, she's right phenomenal. Here. She's phenomenal. And, you know, and I would sit in these Recycling Black Dollars meetings and hear her share, and I'm like, this is life changing information. Yeah, or, is. you know, even that one that has the person that has the business thought brewing, yeah. she can make it manifest with yeah. these things. Yeah. And it was because of Crystal that I met the first time I met Damon John. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, my mother is, she's so cute. She had a little idea, so she was really excited yeah. to meet him. Yeah. And we were at this um, Miller's. Yeah, we went to the um, Miller Court. Uh, Did you share it with him? I don't think she had an opportunity. I mean, oh, it was no. a very quick meeting, but it was very sweet to have my mother meet yeah. him. And then he did a book signing for his Rise and Grind. Uh-huh. And thanks to my daughter, she told me about the um, book signing at the Grove. Yeah. And I went with my friend. Yeah, because we- I was uh, I sat on the panel the first year yeah. that they did it uh, out in Santa Monica. So you Are went. Are they still doing that? Uh-huh. They did. I just, I don't know what happened. Why I didn't get connected They this told year. me I was too old. Oh, yeah, they you are. for 30 and under. Yeah. Oh, it's 30. It used to be the year before you came, it yeah. was every age. Yeah. But then they cut it off, and now they're looking for that millennial. They wouldn't oh, let me in. They yeah, they 30 were. and under. I'm going, what? Uh-oh. But I'm just a little over 30. <laughs> little over 30. <laughs> little over 30. But, yeah, so it was it was a great experience. Oh, my. Look at But we're time. almost time. But yes. I do want to let everybody know uh, the Crenshaw, the second annual Crenshaw 
Christmas ball is uh, Saturday, December 15th. This Saturday. This Saturday. You like coming? Tomorrow. Is that the one you're going to be in? Yeah. That's oh. like tomorrow. Jeez. That's like tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Is that the tomorrow. Black, is that the black and white? That is the one that Carly was there. It's actually not black and white, but it's dressy. And and, oh, okay. and so um, it's from 6 p.m. to 11. Uh, from 6 to somewhere at 7, we're going to perform one of our burlesque, very, very calm burlesque class. Man, uh, I uh, totally perform. forgot about it. I'm going to have to come support you, but... Yeah, I have some stuff that? going on okay. down here on Crenshaw. It's on Crenshaw at 5426 Crenshaw Boulevard. It's hosted by Crenshaw Yoga. I'm also part of the committee, the team. So after I leave here, I got to go to rehearsal. And then oh. well, I got to go and, and we're decorating the studio. We're going to have Is great there food. a cost to attend? Uh, it's $25. Oh, I have tickets for $25. I think it's 35 at the door. Oh. And it's... Um, we're going to have entertainment, DJ. We're going to sing Christmas carols. There's going to be a performance. There's going to be someone that's singing, playing the piano. and um, wonderful. A photo booth. What time is it? It's from 6 to, to 11. To 11, right. So. And um, we, Doolin's has um, donated some of the food. And oh, then we great. have this amazing chef. His name is Otley. Um, I think Otley's also from Jamaica. Oh, okay. And uh, Otley, is, you, he, that was the food last year. Yeah. And so Otley is cooking as well. I mean, he's providing some food as well. We're going to have a fabulous oh, time. open bar. Over Are you going to be able to make it? I think I'm going to rearrange my schedule oh, okay. to do yeah, just that. Yeah, you will have a great time. So, those, so in, those of you that are still interested in coming, you can get your tickets at Crenshaw, Crenshaw Yoga and Dance dot org, and you can do it online. Um, for those that are sitting here at the table with me, you can get your ticket for me. <laughs> and uh, so come on out, guys. And we got a cute little number. We're doing Christmas carols. To, uh, we're dancing to Christmas carols. And got our little Santa gloves and our little hat. And, and uh, it's going to be fun. Our candy cane knee-high stockings with our fishnets. Oh, God. <laughs> Sounds like the place to be. Yeah, it is going to be. So that's tomorrow evening from 6 to seven, six to yeah. 11. And so we'd love to have you guys come out. So uh, that's the only event you've got to announce? Uh, oh, and then tomorrow morning for the little ones, uh, my tennis pro club uh, and also the, pro, the nonprofit that we teach kids how to play tennis, we have from 10 o'clock tomorrow to 2, a fun day, our, Christmas, our annual Christmas tennis day. Everything's and so, so the kids come out, they play tennis, Santa Claus is going to come. We have over 2,000 toys that we're giving out is to kids. Is that a Jim Gillian? That's no, that's not a Jim Gillen. That's at Harvard Park, Harvard. which is oh, at okay. 62nd and Halldale. Okay, and it's free to the public as well. So come out. Um, the, I mean, the kids are going to have a fantastic time. We're expecting some a couple of hundred children, and then we have all our adult volunteers. It's a fun day. Well, so we certainly fun. want to thank our very special guest today, Miss Hyacinth McLeod. And she's my Jamaican <laughs> counterpart. <laughs> I just got to emphasize that. In yeah, other, he don't in, feel in outnumbered in, now, huh? In, in other words, she's a yachty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she has some amazing product, the Obama oil. She also has a friendship Friends. frames that you guys can really check out. And uh, this and is phenomenal. Book. And her book. And you want to pitch the book a little bit sure. one more time? Again, the book is called Entrepreneurial Women of Faith. Sharing our anchor scriptures, where we tell you which scripture gets us through our businesses, our days, and all the challenges. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And she's going to make me a friendship frame also. Absolutely. The name Gilbert. And she's going to tell me how special and wonderful that is, and I can't wait for it. Mm -hmm. Right. So you've been listening to The Business Zone. And as you know, The Business Zone is on every Friday from 3 to 5, uh, Pacific Standard yeah. Time. And uh, you can find us at morrismedialive.com and also at, at, at our on Facebook, The Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. Also, our YouTube channel. You can find us there. Um, we're here again every Friday afternoon and we we broadcast live on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, so this is the Christmas season, guys. So go out, have a good time, support a business owner that looks like you to and, and and we got Kwanzaa coming up right behind Christmas. I don't think we have a show today after Christmas, so I think next yeah, Friday. I don't, I don't think so. Is our is our 
probably our show for the year, but I will verify that. And then um, coming January, we're going to have a blog, so you will get us 24-7. Oh, but we yeah. got some other fantastic things that are going to start Could happening. Could I just share a little uh, local community blessing? Uh-huh. Um, on La Brea and Rodeo, there's a phallus, and I know I don't know who owns it, but I know that because they're closing on Monday— that's a blessing from God, what's going on in that store right now. Okay. 80% off of everything. Nothing in the store. Oh, costs. yeah, yeah. I was right next to Ralph's. Yeah, right next to Ralph's on the uh, brand okay. rodeo. I encourage. It's that's, Christmas. I'm telling you, what's going on there is, is a blessing. God did that that's for very those of us know. that know. Okay. And we kind of ran out of time today. We didn't have a chance to tell you guys how to plan and prepare your business for th- th- 2019. But in our next show next week. Yeah, actually, next week we're going to, that's what we're going to do. We're not, I don't think we're going to have any guests. So next week we're going to go into that. We're going to help you guys to prepare yourself, get business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready for 2019. So you've been on the business zone with, with Crystal, Gilbert, and Hyacinth McLeod. And we're out. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Mm-mm-mm. As a small biz grow, I so we roll. Using procurement program and control. As a small biz grow, so we grow. Using procurement program and control. Yeah, I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Got my capability statement, yes, I'm ready to go. Got my balance sheet, my PL, my statement of cash flow. I'm a business man.